All right, this morning we're going to talk about how to identify time caps in data. And this can be fairly useful if you do uh, any type of data import based on time, uh, which is actually very common to use. For instance, I work in a stock-based environment where we import data from stocks. And obviously, sometimes where we're grabbing our data from, the API goes down, and so we have these gaps in our data and it's important for us to identify those gaps and then re-import other data to fill in those gaps. So that's, that's one very good uh, use for it. The other good use for it is you may work in an OLAP environment where you import data daily and you need to identify where data does not exist daily. Um, in other words, where there's a gap for a day or so. Now in this example, I'm going to be looking at one minute so if you're looking for a quick answer, two things that I'll say. One of the ways you could do this is you can use a between operator. And you want to refer to my previous video where we're looking at the previous or next value. Now I'm using SQL Server 2008 R2. I'm not going to use the lag or lead function. In general, I, don't, I think those functions are, are useful in 2012. But I advise people to know how to do it with row number or dense rank. And the reason why is because getting the next value with row number dense rank you can use in 2005 2000 or uh, row number i mean 2005 2008 2012 it'll still work uh, the lag and lead function are useful but they don't they're really not necessary when you already know how to do like an inner join with row number so i mean they can be useful yes it can minimize how much code you use but overall if you know how to use row number it's what i would highly suggest so we're going to look at one of our tables here so first thing, I'm just going to select star from time gaps, which is a table. And then I'm going to just select star from gaps. Okay, so we have two columns, and I'm going to keep this simple. We have price and we have price date. Let's imagine this was a stock. This is not, but let's just pretend that it was a stock. Okay, so we have a price and we have the price date. So what we're looking for is we're trying to see if we can identify the gaps between this value and this value and this value and this value. So the gaps between one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is kind of like our uh, video where we were looking at the previous value or the next value is I'm going to use row number and I'm going to order by price date. And I'm going to call this ID. So, and this again, this is the lag and lead function here. Simply put, are looking, are basically doing their own little inner join. You may not see it, but that's really what's going on. So now I'm going to inner join gaps. First I'm going to call this G. And I'm going to call this G2 on D equals G2 dot ID minus one. Okay. And if you've seen the previous video, you know why I'm doing this. If you haven't, go and watch that. I'm not going to explain the logic here, but you'll see really fast. Okay, so this is what our full data set looks like. So <clears throat> now we can see it side by side. So we're looking at this date compared to this date. And I don't think in a previous video yet I've used the date add function, so I'm going to introduce the date add function. Note that date add in a where clause is not Sarkable. So that's a key. But since I don't believe I've discussed it yet, I'll go ahead and use this in the where clause just to show you it's another tool that you can use. So we can do date add. And the interval we're going to be looking at in this case is going to be minute. And the next thing we're going to be looking at is g.price date. So let's explain this really fast. Okay, so we're looking at, you know, we look at pull this query. We're looking at everything, and we're going to be comparing side by side. So we're looking at the next value, one, then two, two, then three, three, then four, etc. Okay. So what we're trying to identify is where, in this where clause, where this value right here is over a minute relative to this value. So think about that for just a second. So. This value right here, if you see this, this is, this is imported at 8 a.m., 8.41, 56 a.m. This is imported at 8.42, 11 a.m. So there's about a 15-second gap between these two data points. 
So what we want to identify is where this value, I'm sorry, where this value is over a minute of this value. So where G2 price date is over a minute of G1 price date. So some people always get the, by the way, the, the greater than or less than mixed up on dates. So if you do, don't feel bad. I'm a big believer in always just experiment with it. You will notice, and again, you can look through the data set. Generally speaking, what you see is they're very related. See, so for instance, this value is within a minute. So what we're going to look at is, let's just look at it this way, first of all. And again, you can always check your data. So now what we're doing is data add. We're adding a minute to price date. We're adding one minute to this price date column. And we're looking at where G2 price date is going to be greater than that one minute. So this value is less than this value. So let's look at this right here. Okay, so on ID 5151 and ID 5152, we'll notice that this was imported at 632.26. This value was added at 633.30, which we immediately know that's more than a minute. That's 3226. This is 3330. This basically was imported. I'm not looking at, by the way, the, the milliseconds here. Um, so this value was imported one minute and four seconds um, later than this, I mean, after this value. So let's look at this value here. So we're looking at now 6420, um, 115409. And we're looking at this value, 115619. So we know, and again, you can always check, because for instance, if you were co confused with the operator, and this would be fully understandable, I know some people are in a hurry and they're like, oh, it's this way, oh, wait, 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 no, it's date. Uh, date is not the same, it, you know, when you're looking at one and two, it, it makes sense. But you could always look at it this way and immediately check your first value and say, wait a minute, no, that's, uh, we already had looked at one earlier, and one and two we know are within. So that's um, one of the ways in which you do it. There are other ways to do it, but for now, since I wanted to introduce date add today, because I believe I have not covered this function, this is one of the ways in which you can do that. I happen to know that the data set that I'm looking at, in fact, it's in a different database. There's a lot more than 100,000 values, but it's very rare. So for instance, 41, uh, I know for the last, what is it, seven years, there's been zero gaps of data because what I'll do is refill it in. So there may be gaps in data all the way to 2000, in 2014. So for instance, 41 out of, I think there's about 100,000 rows of data starting from a week and a half ago, maybe not. Hold on, let me go just see if it goes to the lowest. I did the wrong thing. Yeah, so it goes back, I believe, two or three weeks. And so, again, this is one of the ways in which you can identify time gaps. And uh, kind of like the previous video where I did a one where you're looking for date fields, you can also automate this in a very similar vein as well.